Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting deer in the meadow and I'm sipping on some peach tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks such as this one. So this painting that I did today is inspired by a photo that was submitted by one of my Patreon members by the name of Connie Foster. So I have this benefit for my Patreon members whereby every now and again I'll put out a call for photos and then I'll select some of them to turn into YouTube tutorials and as a special thank you I send the painting along to whoever submitted the photo so I hope Connie likes this painting <laughs> um, if you, so if you're interested in learning how you too could submit your photo for me to turn into a, a tutorial and or you'd like to learn more about the patreon membership program where there's tons of painting benefits I have all of that information down below in the video description so let's get painting and let's get sipping all right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you could of course switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint. My colors are titanium white, chrome yellow, green oxide, cobalt blue, fire red, Mars black, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. And of course you can switch those colors up. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing later. And then I have four brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I'm gonna get them in order here. <laughs> I have a three quarter inch and a quarter inch wide flat bristle brushes. Then I have a number five and a number one round synthetic brushes and I will just call them out as I use them and of course you can switch up your brushes as well. If you're painting along with me you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes and down below this video in the video description I will provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the paints, the brushes, and all the good stuff in between. You can also, in my shop, purchase things individually, like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my number five round to pre-mix a custom color. I'm gonna be creating a custom lavender color for the background uh, landscape area up at the top. So for this step, I'm gonna be using red, blue, white, yellow and green and then we're going to do a base coat with our yellow and the green for the ground so i have pre-mixed my soft lavender color which i have on my palette here how i got to this color was i mixed a lot of white and then a little bit of red and blue so red and blue is going to make a purple tone for me my red and blue makes a real kind of soft or um, non-vibrant kind of purple tone. So I can use that and just mix it with some white and this is gonna give me a really nice atmospheric um, back tree line type of um, area for my landscape. So this is the color that I'm going for. Once I've got this, I'm gonna put away my mixing tool and then I'm gonna take out my large brush. I'm gonna be painting the entire top area with this custom lavender color. I'm gonna bring it almost halfway down. So for me, my halfway point is about here. I'm gonna come up maybe about an inch, inch and a half on both sides. That's about as far down as I'm gonna have my, um, my background. 
And you can see as I'm just painting this on, it, you might detect more of the reddish hues. You might detect more of the bluish hues. It could actually, I think I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more red into it as I've got it on my canvas. I think I want it a little bit more on the lavender side. So I'm just adding a little bit more of my red to it. And that way, as I paint it on, it's gonna have more of a purple hue. That's almost too blue for me. So I just added a little bit more red to the mixture. And now I've got a nice soft lavendery type of uh, color. And I'm gonna bring this all the way down to my, um, to my markers. I'm just going back and forth, left to right. You could certainly do a, um, a, a thinner coat if you wanted to. I'm just kind of putting it on here in a kind of carefree type of manner. We're gonna, this is just the base coat of it. We're gonna be doing a lot more to the, um, to that area in a future step. So don't feel like this has to be a, fully rendered um, color right now and again mine is still a little bit too blue but I will correct that when I go to do the other layers on it so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush now and I'm gonna go in for my land so on the, I'm going being inspired by a photograph today and on the ground there's some really vibrant uh, bright summery sun-drenched yellow type of grass. So I'm gonna be doing those areas with a base coat of my chrome yellow, and then we'll intermingle the darker shadowed areas with the green oxide. So I'm just gonna start with some of my chrome yellow on my brush. I'm gonna bring this all the way up and I'm gonna intermingle it or hit it into that horizon line or that area that is um, meeting that background. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend, just something soft. That's going to be, everything's going to be, or a lot of stuff is going to be out of focus anyways. Um, so just lots of softness. So I just keep picking up my, my uh, yellow, green, or my chrome yellow, but I did touch some of that wet paint up there. So you might detect a little bit of um, darker streaks every now and again, because I've got a little bit of that um, background on there. And I'm gonna do sections that I kind of am detecting in the photo. So it's pretty wide here and gets a little bit more narrow in through there. And then there's some, some areas in through here that are really vibrant. So I'm just gonna kind of paint these sections of color in through here with this yellow, bringing this down pretty far close to the bottom. And then this uh, goes really narrow out over in through here. And then once I've got those yellow sections on, I'm not even gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna just pick up green oxide and I'm gonna fill in the blanks with green oxide. And so I'm just doing a left to right brush stroke at this point. You don't need to do anything fancy. Again, a lot of this is gonna be out of focus by the time we're done. There's gonna be very minimal area that's in focus, which will be where the, where the deer is, the young buck deer. Um, but a lot of this grass is going to be out of focus, so we don't necessarily need um, distinct brush strokes at this point. Everything kind of merges together when it's out of focus. So I'm just going back and forth, left to right, giving myself a nice base coat to work from. And then down at the bottom, just painting this whole section in with green as well. So just some green oxide is going to fill in all of my gaps in through here. And you can just overlap it a little bit into those yellow sections. So again, don't feel your sections have to be exactly as mine. And if they touch one another, that's awesome. I'm just letting them kind of merge together in through here. And then we're gonna be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this base coat done, you can wash and dry this large brush. Whoops, almost just dropped my brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish this background part and we're gonna do a second coat onto the, um, the grass. I call this the background part because I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's land back there or um, a tree line. I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's some kind of land, but I don't know if I should call it a hill or a mountain or trees. So we're just gonna call it the background 
area. <laughs> I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, uh, but I'm going to use my number five round again to make a couple of custom colors. So I'm going to be using my custom lavender for the background plus red, white, green, yellow. Um, and if I have any other colors I want to use, I will and I'll let you know. And then down here, I'm going to be making a custom light yellow and a custom dark green to intermingle and to start more texture on the grass. So I will be using my lavender, blue, red, white, yellow, green, and black. So I have pre-mixed my light yellow and my dark green here on my palette. How I got to my light yellow is I used a lot of chrome yellow and white, but for me, my chrome yellow leans towards the side of green. So I want, I didn't want this to be that yellowy, yellowy. So what I did is just add a teeny tiny dot of red paint into it. And that brings it more into almost like a soft muted light yellow, more of a neutral type of a um, light yellow tone. So that's where I'm headed with that. Then for my dark green color, I've got that here. So depending on the green that you're working for, you could potentially get away with just green and black, but my green has a lot of brown in it. So when I add black to it, it or just black, it tends to be a little bit on the duller side. And I wanted this to really still remain a nice rich um, green tone so I added more yellow to it so you can add yellow actually my chrome yellow and black makes a really awesome um, green so you can just adjust that um, that chrome or value in the paint by adding back a little bit more yellow and if you wanted your green to look like it's sitting in you know the distance you could always add a little bit of blue to it as well. So you could certainly have a, double, a couple of different green tones going, but this is where I'm going to start. And then um, I'll, when we put more details on the painting, I will make other shades of green, but this is where we're going to start with our dark green. So that's what I'm going to go for. As I go up into my background area, up and through here, in the photo reference, there is a greenish yellow line of looks to be maybe some treetops or something. So I'm gonna start that with my um, light yellow and green oxide. And it's somewhere almost in the middle of these two. I'm putting this on first because I have a feeling um, I'm gonna need to adjust the, the tones of it at, after it dries. So I'm just gonna start it right now. Um, and then as after I get done everything else, I'll probably need to adjust it a little bit, but that's all I'm going to do for that section. <laughs> and everything disappears behind some trees over in through here, so don't feel the need to do anything super special over on that right-hand side. So now what I'm doing, I'm just washing and drying my brush. And whatever this area is, it really has a lot of like soft purple tones to it. So I'm going to use my custom lavender, which on my canvas looks a little blue. Um, I'm going to use that plus a touch of red and a touch of white on my brush. So I have three colors on my brush right now. And I'm going to add these real um, soft kind of um, light purpley type of tones to this. I'm going to bump right into if that's dry enough, I'm going to go right close to that, that area in through there. I don't necessarily want this to read as totally pink, um, but I definitely want it to have some of these light lavender tones to it. So I just picked up those three colors again, and I'm using them on my brush at the same time. So it, it res in the, in the photo, there is different values throughout this area. So that's what I'm trying to do. It's pretty light over here on this left-hand side. So I'm gonna just add a couple more pops of, of lightness. I'm hitting that green section right now so it doesn't look like I'm painting behind it. And I am noticing that there's some of this green kind of down in this area as well, but very, very faint. So I'm just gonna kind of touch my brush in this wet paint in through here and maybe pull a couple of these little pieces. Actually, I'm gonna pick up just a tiny bit more green oxide and a little bit of my light yellow because I am seeing these little out of focus pops down in through here. So I'm thinking that might be um, 
some kind of tree line or something that is speaking to us in this photo. <laughs> and then over on this right hand side, I feel like it gets pretty dark over there. Um, so I'm going to just leave a lot of that darker lavender color. So I just picked up more of that on my dirty brush, just making sure I have a good coverage over in this area. If you felt you needed it to go darker, you could certainly add a touch more blue to it. That'll, that'll get it to go a little bit darker. But again, we're going to be hiding the majority of this with a big tree. Um, I'm picking up more of my uh, original lavender on my dirty brush so you might notice that it's got a little bit of those more um, pinkish type of hues into it or lighter purpley kind of hues I am going to add more of this stuff down in through here so again my lavender plus a touch of red and a touch of white and I'm talking just a teeny tiny touch I, you, when I when I call out um, quantities like that I really uh, caution you and <laughs> that's my my way of of just making you aware that I am hardly using any paint on my brush and I'm just kind of dabbing this in again white lavender and a tiny touch of red and you could be using the small bristle brush to do this but um, for me I feel that I can get these larger color variations when I'm using this bigger brush like this so I think and that's looking pretty good maybe a little bit more of my reddish tones in this area so just little little pops here and there and if it goes too much just pick up a little bit more of that lavender maybe a touch of white just kind of keep keep playing with these little values and getting I'm um, it's all out of focus so we're just really going for a soft color pattern right now um, on this little area into here I feel like I need a little bit more yellow so I'm going to go for a touch more of that light yellow on my brush and maybe just pop little little pops of it in through here nothing major maybe a touch of red too because it's looking a little too yellow so a tiny bit of there we go just give it a little little softer tone than that bright yellow so that puts a little brownish hue to it and you could even, looks like there might be a, a tiny bit of dark green. So I just popped a little dark green on my brush. And I'm just kind of watching the photo and saying, oh, there's a little dark green here. Oh, there's a little light green here. And going with that. And again, we're going to have a big tree um, in, in the equation. I feel like I need a little bit more of my purpley tones down here. So white, red, and a tiny bit of my lavender. Just right down in this area, down towards that horizon line. And again, just all out of focus, this some springtime or summertime appearance in through here. And then once I've got that done, I'm going to um, hop down to my grass. So I'm thinking that that's all I need to do in through here. Maybe a little bit more over here. <laughs> I'm like, that's all, but except for over here. <laughs> it's, it's hard when you start doing this. It's like, oh, but I want a little bit more here or a little bit more there. I'm washing my brush. I had a little bit too much yellow on my brush, which made this a little too orange for me. So just kind of wash my brush and just uh, with the moisture on my brush, just kind of moving this around. That looks pretty good. Tiny bit more white. And then I, I will move on to the grass in a second. <laughs> it's hard because you, you start doing it's like, oh, but I want just a little bit more here and a little bit more there. I think that that's pretty good. So now on my grass, and again, over here is not super important because there's going to be that big tree that we're, that's going to um, take up the space. So on my grass, I'm just going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to start with that light yellow color. And I'm going to be doing out of focus up and through here and in a lot of this grass and through here. This is probably the only area in through here that's going to have a little bit of focal um, dimension to it. But up top, this is my light yellow. I'm just going to be using this soft um, circular type of brush stroke to lay on top of my um, on top of my chrome yellow. And in a minute, I'm going to also put some white in it. But this has given me this really great dimensional element to this background grass. I'm also going to put a little bit of it in through here. You don't have to cover up all of the chrome yellow. Just a little bit will go a long way um, in through here. I definitely want that to be whiter. But right now, I'm just kind of dabbing in um, this light yellow color in order to give myself the, the soft sunshiny 
um, tones that I'm looking for in through here. I've got a lot of this lighter color in through here, but I still see some of the dark, darker chrome yellow. So I'm just watching my picture and just allowing myself to um, follow the color pattern that I'm seeing on the picture. Uh, right now, I'm going to start uh, putting in some of that dark green. I'm going to put some white up here in a minute, but I want that to dry a little bit before I put that on. So I'm just going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to pick up my dark green. I'm going to use a combination of my dark green and my probably my um, green oxide, but I'm starting with my dark green. I'm going to have a lot of the dark green over on this right-hand side. It's almost as if this little deer is emerging from the shadows of the of the woods or wherever he's he's coming from. I see a lot of dark green in through here. Uh, we've got some dark green little speckles of it in through here. This is where it's going to start to get more um, with texture in it. So I'm kind of dabbing more than giving the long brush strokes. I got a couple little dark pieces down in through here. And then up by this big tree, there's going to be a tree back here. There's a lot of dark grass back here that I'm seeing. So the, this might be shadowed grass from the tree. So I'm just, again, following my color pattern. There is um, a real out of focus area that's um, by the bottom of the tree. So I'm just going to kind of rub a little bit of this dark green up into that um, light yellow a little bit. And then just kind of bring this down into here. And we will have another step for the grass. So don't feel like if your grass doesn't look exactly like mine at this point that it's not good because we definitely have another step where I'm going to be adding lots more texture to it. I'm putting a little bit of this dark green over in through here. And then I'm just going to pick up my light green or my green oxide, sorry, to, um, to make sure that I've got a second coat on all of the green areas in through here. Maybe I'll just pull a couple of little pieces up because I know that this is going to be the area that's going to have a lot of texture to it because it's going to be closer to us. Um, but I don't need to do much, just a, just a little bit. <laughs> just, you know, pull it up just a little bit every now and again, especially in this bottom uh, area. And again, my main goal is to just get a second coat on right now and to maybe start a little bit of the texture that I'm seeing um, in the photograph. But again, primarily it's laying down this color pattern so I can proceed with those, those details the way that I want. In here, I feel like there's some green and yellow kind of intermingled. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my uh, my chrome yellow as well in this section and through here. Looks like there's some little spots of sunshine that are popping their head in that little section. And then I'm going to go back up to my light yellow in a, in a second in order to pop a little bit of white on it. But let me just make sure I've got a second coat all in through here. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pop some yellow, or excuse me, some white on top of that light yellow area. So washing and drying my brush. And I'm going to pick up some white paint and it's very bright back in through here. So I'm going to uh, put some white on top of my yellow and I'm just kind of softly rubbing it in. I don't need it to blend 100% but I definitely want there to be some really light, bright stuff in this area in through here. And maybe I got, looks like there's some over in through here, maybe a little pop of it over in through here. And then I need to soften this line that meets the back. So it meets the, um, the background area. So I just picked up a little bit more of my light yellow so I can get a nice, soft transition between these two and it doesn't look like it's just one cut line. So I just picked up a little bit more of my light yellow and just kind of rolling it around so I can get this nice soft transition into that background. And I think that that's all I'm going to do for this step, picking up just a little bit more white. Um, so you can fiddle with it all you want and we're going to be using I think we're going to use maybe a combination of, well, well, I think we're going to use this brush for the next step. <laughs> if I change my mind, I'll let you know. <laughs> so you can definitely wash this brush and get ready for the next step. <laughs> 
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the two trees that are behind the deer to the right. So we've got a couple of tree trunks in through here and then really out of focus leaves up at the top and over on the side. So I'm going to use a combination of my three quarter inch and my quarter inch bristle brushes. I'm going to definitely be using black, blue, white, yellow, green, probably my dark green, um, and I'm not sure what other colors, <laughs> maybe, I, that might be it, um, maybe a little bit of brown, but I'll call them out as I use them, maybe some of that light yellow too. <laughs> so what, I've, what I really want to do is, I'm, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to be putting in a really soft, thin layer of the background trees. While that's drying, I'm going to come and do the trunks because the trunks kind of overlap, or at least one of them overlaps some of that background, um, some of the foliage of the tree. So I'll come and do the trunks, and then after I'm done in the trunks, I'll go and finesse those out of focus leaves. The leaves go from really dark green in, in through here with little pops of yellow um, out of focus sunshine marks <laughs> um, coming through the leaves. There's a couple of really bright yellow ones up and through here, and then they're really light and soft, like a pastel, beigey, yellowy green kind of color over and through here. So as I put this base coat on, I'm going to transition from one color to the next, just so we have a soft base in there. So I'm going to start with a little bit of my dark green, and I'm coming all the way over in this vicinity, a little bit above my um, horizon line. I'm gonna go somewhere in through here. I'm just gonna kind of use this circular type of motion. My trunk is gonna come and overlap in through here. Um, so I don't really need to do a lot in through there, but I definitely wanna have some, some leaves back there. It does also go a little bit darker in some areas, but I'm just going to start with the dark green in order to um, get that base on here and not get too confused. I'm going to put a couple of little pieces of the dark green up in through here. I'm reserving some spots for my light yellow one to pop in there in a minute. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to just, with the remnants on my brush, just kind of bring a little bit of this over in through here because I know that the green will help to... Um, uh, uh, steer the the color of those bright pieces that I'm going to be having on top. So that looks pretty good. Now without, <clears throat> I'm going to cough a little, <coughs> without washing my brush, I do see actually a little bit of red-ish tones down and through here. So I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit of red. I don't know if I said I was going to use red, but I think I'm probably going to use all of my colors in this stuff. So I just picked up a little bit of red on my dirty brush and I'm just going to kind of uh, spin that in just a couple little reddish tones in through there that looks pretty good seeing a little tiny bit up in through there as well so now I'm going to wash and dry my brush <clears throat> and I'm going to start laying in the light or the bright yellow tone now I know that I have a really dark base under underneath here so when I did this yellow here I had a, a white base up here I have a dark base so if I just added chrome yellow on top of here it wouldn't I'll, I'll show you what would happen you you're not going to be able to really see it it's going to turn this dark darker green type of a shade so I definitely need to add lighter tones up there in order to get the yellow to pop so I'm going to actually start with my light yellow color and I'm just going to give myself these little kind of circular um, type of shapes up in through here. I don't really need to do, actually I'm going to switch to my um, my smaller bright brush because I want these to be littler kind of um, marks. So I'm going for out of focus so I want my edges of my marks to be really soft. That's why I'm using this type of brush in through here. And then as I transition over to this left hand side I'm going to uh, pick back up my large brush. I'm going light yellow plus a touch of white on my brush at the same time because there's a lot of this in through here so I can get away with the, the bigger brush uh, for the dominant places. 
I'm gonna, again, add be adding additional colors to this, but this is gonna just start my base in through here, and then maybe I'll pull a couple down in through here. As I'm getting towards the, the tips, I am gonna switch back to my bright brush, my smaller bright brush, so white plus my light yellow, and I'm just gonna kinda give myself these, a lot of small circular type of marks. Could even pull a couple down outside of the area, something like this, and then up in through here. Just, again, these are so out of focus that I, it's ju I just want these small circular type of marks and I'll be adding some additional um, colors to them in, in a minute. So while that's kind of drying and just, um, you know, taking on its own thoughts. <laughs> I'll put a couple more in through here. There we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the trunks. So I am going to use my small bristle brush for the trunks because I, again, want them to be super out of focus. I have um, one going to the right and one kind of standing straight up. The one that's diagonal is going to be the one behind and then the one straight is gonna be in front. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint and I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. If I wanna do a dry brush type of a technique, I'm gonna have it in through here and I'm just gonna go in this diagonal way and you can see right through it because I, I want it to be dry. I want to um, be able to, to build on top of this. I'm letting my edges be really soft so they're gonna kind of disappear in that background. I'm gonna do it again with the other one. So the other one is gonna be in front of it. So again, just a teeny tiny bit of paint. I can pull this up into the, um, the branches themselves and this is gonna go right in front of this one. Again, just a teeny tiny bit of paint and just kind of scrub it on there and allow for those edges to just be soft. So that's why I'm using very little bit of paint so the edges kind of just disappear in the background. If you need a little help with them disappearing, you can add a tiny bit of water onto your brush and that'll get them to be, to it, that'll get that paint to sink into the holes of the canvas a little bit more. Um, along those edges. Sometimes that can be a little bit difficult to um, to get it to sink into those holes when you're trying for this soft kind of appearance. So now that I've got that, I just wanna tweak the colors on my, on my trunks a little bit. So I do need it to be a little bit darker, but not the edges. The edges that disappear can remain kind of transparent like that. So I just picked up a little bit more black to go in this center area and just a little bit more black in through here and I'm just gonna let it just fade out into um, that soft edge. Same thing, oh, let me, let me get the back of this one first. So just a little bit on this guy and again, just allowing for that edge to be really soft. And then this front one, I'm actually gonna add um, black on the right and I'm gonna put some lighter tone on the left-hand side. So just putting some black on the right wiping my brush off, putting a tiny bit of water on it just to make sure that I still have this soft transition on this right-hand side. And on this left-hand side, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of blue and white on my dirty brush. So I have blue and white on my dirty brush to get just a little bit of lightness on the left side of this tree. And again, just out of focus, that's all I'm going for. <laughs> just a nice out of focus appearance let it just kind of blend into the sides. I can even with this remnants, I feel like this looks pretty nice on the front tree. So I'm gonna put a little on the back tree like that. That's all I'm gonna do for that. Um, actually, let me just put a little bit more of the, I see a little bit more, uh, now that I have that blue and white on my brush, I see some up in through here. So I'm gonna just go and put a little bit wherever I see it, because maybe these are little pops of the sky popping through or something. So a little bit of my cobalt blue and white. I'm seeing some light areas up in through here. And that's all I'm looking for right now is just color patterns. I see a little bit of blue on, on my um, green leaves in through here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of it in through there. 
Now I'm going to just start finessing my leaves themselves. <laughs> I'm, I'm searching for blue in the, in the photo right now. That's good. Um, I'm going to wash and dry my brush now, and I'm going to finesse these little leaves. I'm going to make some of these darker, these brighter, and these lighter over here. So I'm washing and drying my small brush, my small, um, uh, what am I using? <laughs> my, my small bristle brush. Um, in through here, I've got a couple of um, it, up and through here darker areas. So I'm going to go with my dark green plus a tiny bit of black paint just so I can um, push back some of these areas in through here. And this whole time I'm most likely going to be just be using this circular type of brush stroke in order to get um, the illusion of these small leaves and stuff in through here. So this is just black and my, um, my dark green. I feel that there's a couple of little tiny darker marks up in through here. So I'm just accounting for those. That looks pretty good. And now I'm going to, I guess in through here's a little bit darker too. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to start adding my lighter tones. Oh, I think I got a little dark area up in through here too. <laughs> when you see it, just do it. <laughs> there we go, that looks good. I'm washing and drying my brush. So my lighter areas are gonna be um, I got bright yellow up and through there. So I'm going to go with uh, a little bit of white right now to just pop in some really bright areas. I'm going to put the chrome yellow on top of this in a minute, but I'm picking a couple of smaller areas um, within this section that I've already put the yellow on. So this is just white to give these little pops. You'll see how it translates in a minute. Down in through here, I have some um, kind of yellowy orange. So I have a little bit of white. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my light yellow plus a touch of red. So that's going to give me kind of like a light orangey type of a tone, maybe a little bit more than that. <laughs> um, and again, I'm just kind of looking for color patterns in through here. If I'm seeing something um, that is a little orangey, I'm popping that in. I, I've got a really neat color on my brush right now. So I'm going to use it in some, some various areas. If I can if I make a color or have a color on my brush and I start seeing that elsewhere, just utilize what's on your brush. So I'm seeing this tone that I just made, this kind of like light orangey um, or ish. It's not orange. It's kind of like a really super pale peachy kind of tone. I'm kind of seeing it in these various other areas. So I'm going to just kind of pop it in. And then I, in a minute, I, I'll have that light white or that light, light pale um, color to accentuate this. So this is looking pretty good. I'm going to wash and dry my brush now and I'm going to um, pick up some chrome yellow to pop on top of these guys in through here. So chrome yellow and you can see now that I've done that how bright they are. They might need a little bit of that orange tone so I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, yellow plus red because they're a little bit too yellow for me. So I just picked up a little bit of yellow and red just to tone them down. So they have almost a little orangey type of hue in them because that's what I'm, I'm detecting in the photo. So something like that works. I'm gonna put some of this in through here because I like it. <laughs> and now um, I'm thinking I'm ready to start adding that white on top. So I'm not even gonna wash my brush so the colors will start to talk to each other. I just picked up some white and I'm just gonna add all of these little bright, soft circular marks. Um, I'm seeing some down in through here. Again, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna go everywhere. This is one of those steps that it could easily um, get out of control. So just a little bit of paint on your brush and just popping in these really light tones that are poking their head through the trees or being maybe they're the leaves that are being illuminated. Um, I'm seeing them as small circular uh, shapes. You could certainly maybe you, you might see them as you know other type of shapes. Maybe you see yours as more long, elongated or um, more distinct leaf type of shapes, but I'm just seeing them as these really just soft circular shapes. So that's where I'm headed with my brush stroke. So as, I, as I'm doing stuff like this, I try and emulate whatever texture or shape that I'm seeing in um, in the image and for me right now I'm seeing a lot of just small circular shapes so that's where I'm headed. 
And then I'm thinking that that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do, I am going to let it dry. And if I feel that there's any additional areas that might um, warrant another another coat or two or a, a lighter version, I might um, pop a little bit more lightness or richness or darkness into it. But this is the general gist of it. So once you've got yours done, we are going to be using probably a combination of this um, brush, this the small br bristle and the large bristle for the next step. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to predominantly finish our grass. I'm gonna call it finish, finish the grass. However, we are gonna put some little detailed grass after we put the deer on. So we're almost finishing the grass. <laughs> and well, I'll call it the grass detail later when we do the, the other little tiny details. But I want to get a, the, the grass almost done, especially where the deer is going to be placed, the stuff that's going to be behind the deer. So that way we're not working around the deer too much. I'm probably going to be using both my large bristle, bristle and my small one. The colors I'm going to use are light yellow, yellow, brown, white, um, and maybe green oxide and my dark green. I am going to be just finessing it a little bit more, making sure I have all the texture that I want back here. I still want to make sure that's super soft. I am noticing from the photo that there's some out of focus additional stuff around the tree that I just want to make sure that I've accounted for. And then I'm, I'm going to work from the top down. So that way, as I come down, every, the, all the grass in front can go on top of the grass behind it. So we're going to have a soft texture here. And then as it comes down towards the, towards the um, focal point, which is right around here, it'll be more textured. And then down at the bottom bottom, it goes back out of focus. So this is one of those photos that the camera focused right on that deer and everything else is out of focus. So it's a really cool, um, really cool thing to learn how to paint. I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna use a tiny bit of, and I've got my large bristle brush. I'm using a tiny bit of white paint because I feel like I still want this to be a little bit softer at this horizon line. So I picked up a little bit of white paint and I'm just gonna kind of dull this down just a little itty bitty bit more. I'm at picking up a little bit of my light yellow as well because the white was too too dramatic for me. <laughs> so I picked up white plus a little bit of my light yellow. So that is softening up nicely for me. A little bit more of my light yellow so we don't lose the light yellow. <laughs> and just making sure that, because uh, I can see some of my background color in through here. So I just want to make sure that I um, covered that properly. So that works out well for me in through there. Now I've got to attend to whatever is in through here. So I think I'm going to switch to my small bristle brush because there's a little, little details here. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my dark green and brown. So dark green and brown. I see some little, I don't know what this is. It's like a little extra tree or something in through here. So we're just going to, we're just going to put it in because I see it in the, in the photo. So we're just going to make sure that it's attended to in through here. I already started this stuff but I feel it needs a little more finessing. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown and white because it looks like there's little uh, edges to this out of focus thing. So <laughs> I'm just, little brown and white will take care of that. That looks pretty good. I need to do right around the bottom of the tree as well, I'm wiping my brush off. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of green oxide because uh, I feel this is a little bit brighter in through here and just kind of allowing for that a little bit of dark greens going on my brush now i'm just kind of watching the color pattern as um, i'm doing this the deer sits right in through here um, so i know that i can't see anything behind here so we're just gonna we're just gonna imagine what it is i'm just gonna soften that up this tree looks like it comes down a little bit further so i'm gonna wipe my brush off and pick up a tiny bit of black and just bring this down just a little little bit further in through here so it goes back behind what's going to be the tail of my 
of my deer or the butt end of my deer, <laughs> something like that. That works out. Now I'm going to switch back to my large bristle brush because I feel like that's good enough over there. So in through here, right now I have my light yellow and white on my brush. I'm going to pick up um, a little bit of my dark green just to make sure that I've got this area attended to. So I'm just kind of tapping it where I'm going to also wash my brush right now get that light yellow and white off. I thought I could handle it, but I can't. <laughs> so washing and drying my brush, picking up a little bit of my dark green. So I'm just, I see that there's a little bit of um, unevenness in the grass and through here. So I'm just making sure that I've got that in my painting. I also see that it comes all the way over to here, which I didn't catch before and I'm catching now. And there's a little dark spot in through here. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown also with my dark green, give this a little earthier tone in through here and I'm just trying to emulate the texture that I'm seeing in the photo again this is still all super out of focus in through here um, I'm thinking that that's pretty good I'm going green uh, the dark green that is over in through here just making sure I've got my second coat that looks pretty good making sure it's nice and soft I've got some brighter it looks like I've got a couple of little well, green oxide I'm picking up right now, a couple of little brighter areas over in through here. And in a second, I'm going to start getting into more texture of the grass. Uh, right now, I'm still just kind of going back and forth left to right. But right now, I feel like I'm going to start moving into areas with texture. So this is where I'm going to start pulling up paint. But I, I'm going to have to do a dance with the colors because I go light green, dark green, or light yellow, dark green green, light yellow, so I'm going to have to wash my brush quite frequently. So I'm washing and drying my brush right now. In this area, I'm going to pull in a little bit of my light yellow and a touch of brown. So light yellow and brown, and I feel as if this will pull up some pretty um, pieces in through here. It looks like there's some little bits of out of focus stuff. I might actually change brushes too. I'm going to change brushes. That one's too big for me. Uh, change brushes to my small bristle because this stuff is still super out of focus in through here so I don't want my brush to be too big where I can't control this soft focus stuff so again just brown and light yellow is where I'm headed with this in through here and then I can go to my light yellow and white in this little spot in through here my deer again is going to pop up over in through here somewhere so I don't need to do too much over there but just trying to get these colors to be pretty similar to what I'm seeing in the picture again light yellow and white that's working out pretty well for me in through here that looks pretty good and then in through here this is just a bunch of um, smaller grass so I'm going light yellow and uh, chrome yellow right now on top of this green stuff so I'm going to start bringing this up and this is where I'm, I'm starting to do a little bit more texture in through here. Uh, switch brush, sorry. <laughs> I'm switching brushes and colors a lot on this one. So switching back to my big brush, you know, I get in an area and it's like, well, I think I can do it with this brush, but you know, it becomes easier if, I, if I'm using the right size brush. So again, chrome yellow and light yellow is what I'm using right now just to give myself a little bit more um, texture in through here. This is going to be uh, where it's sneaking up on where the deer and the uh, really in focus grass is going to be. So I'm just uh, playing my, my cards good here. I just picked up some more green oxide. Make sure that this kind of overlaps in through here. Over here, I feel like there's some lightness, like green oxide and white. So just a light pale kind of um, green tone over here. Not too much yellow in it. So um, green oxide and white will get me this light, almost pastel -y type of a tone in through here. I feel like there's just a little bit of that back in through there. It's going to be right behind the deer. So these light tones behind the deer are going to make that deer pop a lot. So as you're going through this, don't don't shy away from these lighter tones, especially where that deer is going to be. So this looks pretty good in through here. Uh, I'm going, I'm going to wash my big brush 
because I want to pull some other tones in through here. So washing and drying my big brush. This is going to be um, some, what am I going to do here? I'm going to go light yellow and white, light yellow and white, and I'm going to pull up bunch of little tiny pieces in through here. This is going to be the in focus or we're going to have more focus on this stuff in a little bit but right now I just need to get these um, it started. I don't I know that I have my deer that's that's coming and my deer is going to take up a lot of the attention um, but I definitely want to have some fun uh, longer grass in through here as I'm seeing it in the photo. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm also seeing some of that um, lavender color from the background sky area. So I'm going to incorporate a little bit of that in a, in a minute, which I didn't say I was going to use, but I should have because I knew I was going to use it. So right now just kind of popping in these little soft light marks. This looking great. I'm going to now pick up a little bit of my sky or my, that's not my sky, my background lavender, whatever you want to call it, somewhere in through here. I'm catching some of this lavender in through here, a little bit at the bottom of the deer. And you know, you can make these into flowers. It looks like they're kind of like long wheat grass type of stuff to me um, with maybe little tiny buds on them. I'm not quite sure, but I'm just seeing that color. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm also seeing that color somewhere down in through here. So I'm going to just kind of pop this in. This is getting out of focus down at the bottom. So I'm going to start using a circular type of brush stroke, which will get it to kind of um, transition from this out of focus stuff into the in focus stuff. So I'm just using the remnants on my brush right now because there's some um, soft green areas down at the bottom. I just picked up some more green oxide. Sorry, my let's just move the canvas like this so I can hit this bottom like this. And again, just kind of circular motions in order to make this look out of focus, similar to how we did that background tree. I'm gonna pick up some dark green right now, just make sure we've got this dark green area transitioning into here. It's looking good, just making this all out of focus in through here with this circular motion and then getting it to transition right into that in focus little area in through there. And then over on this right hand side, which I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm going to pick up a little bit of green oxide and chrome yellow because I feel like this right here is a little bit kind of more um, vibrant of tone for the green. So like that will work and just pulling little pieces up in front of that green or in front of the yellow section. So it looks like these pieces of grass are overlapping that section. And I think that's all I'm going to do for this step. You can of course fiddle with yours all you want. I was actually pulling a couple of little pieces of green stuff up into here. Uh, you can fiddle with it all you want. We're going to be using our drawing utensil for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this big brush away or whatever brush you were using away. Take out a drawing utensil if you can ever stop this and put my canvas back here and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our deer. I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start the stuff because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. <laughs> so I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers and basic shapes. And by the time we're done, we'll have a simple outline that we'll be able to utilize during the painting and process. So we're not going to go for any details like the eyes or nose or anything like that, just some kind of basic shape for the animal. I will be using my chalk for most of the time, but I think I might have to switch to a regular pencil during this light area so you guys can see it, but we'll see how that goes. What I'm going to first do is guide you towards the center of your canvas. So for me, top to bottom, left to right, the center of my canvas is somewhere right about in through here. Then what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to go to the right of that about an inch and down about an inch. So somewhere in this vicinity is going to be my first marker. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the right of that about four inches, somewhere in through here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the difference between these two. So somewhere in through here, 
my so we're first going to be ma we're making an oval and what I'm going to do is this is going to be the width of my oval which is about four inches the height of my oval is about two and a half inches but I've put my markers a little bit lower than the halfway point so if let's say this is just um, between the two of these guys here I'm going to come down about an inch and then up about an inch and a half somewhere in through there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these outside four markers with an oval that is tipped just a tiny bit to um, down on the left and up on the right. So I'm going to take from here and I'm going to connect up here. I'm going to bring it over like this, down like that. You can connect here to here to here, something like that. So it, I say it's tipped a little bit. I guess it's a little bit smaller on the right hand side than it is on the left hand side. So that'll give us our first um, shape that we're going to work from. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another oval. So this will be the main section for the body. I'm going to make another oval for the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come directly up from this edge of this one about, if you go from here, it's going to be up maybe about two inches somewhere in here, yep, I know it's going to need my pencil, <laughs> somewhere in through here is going to be that marker. This oval is going to be about an inch and a half wide, or excuse me, an inch wide by about an inch and a half um, tall. So I'm going to go about an inch and a half up from here, make myself another marker with something that you guys can see, <laughs> and then you can split the difference and then just go from side to side about a half of an inch. And then you can connect these with a oval type of a shape. So something like this will give me that oval. So that's going to be for the head. Let me just give you some white line here so you can see that better. Now I'm going to connect the head to the body from right about this area in here to about halfway up that oval. I'm going to bring it down and then just curve it like that in through there. And then I'm going to take it a little bit, not at the bottom of the oval, but a little bit to the left of it, somewhere right in through here. I'm going to connect that to about halfway down this oval, so somewhere in through here. I'm going to give it just a little bit of a curve, like that. <laughs> I'm going to keep switching my utensils so you can see what I'm doing, something like that. And then I'm going to um, give a couple of little ears. So. They're pretty big. This is a young buck and it's got large ears for its head. So just know that this is just the, um, the outline. You can certainly, as the, as we go through the painting process, you can, um, modify this a little bit, but they're pretty darn large for the, the head. If the head, I mean, even, I want to just kind of give you a, a thought as to how so they're actually longer than the head is wide. So just know that that's pretty big. <laughs> and then I'm going to make two little markers for where I want my, my antlers. So this, it's a young buck, so that it doesn't have many points on the antlers. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish the body here. So I want to do a couple of things before I start adding on to the legs. I want to give a little bit of a bump for the chest in through here. So. I'm just going to bump that out a little bit on this bottom corner in through here. And then this, um, the rear end that we're seeing on this deer, where the, the tail is, act, the tail and the back um, leg area is making a big kind of bump behind this oval. So I'm going to take this down from the top in through here, somewhere in through here. I'm going to give myself this, um, like, just a kind of a half bump like that. I don't know how else to explain it other than kind of like just a bump like that. <laughs> now I'm going to, and I didn't connect it to anything because we're going to put the leg on there in a minute. So now I'm going to make all the legs. I'm going to give you little markers where to put the bottoms of them and then we'll, we'll connect those bottoms to the actual deer itself. So if you find yourself about halfway in between here and here, and find you know the halfway point of the body in through here i'm going to come down about two inches which for me lands right in this bottom of this bright section in through here because i think the deer is kind of walking out 
from in, in the bright section. I'm gonna go to the left of that, I would say almost an inch, somewhere in here. I'm gonna give you a couple of colors so hopefully you can see it, something like that. And then to the right of that, I'm gonna go maybe about an inch, inch and a half, and give my, or maybe another inch, somewhere in through here, give myself another little marker. So I did this one uh, at a little bit of an angle this way, and this one is kind of straight up, this little marker in through here. And then from here, or even you can just kind of go from the, the tail end of the, of the deer, come straight down into the grass, and then to the right of that, about an inch, something like this is gonna give you this back foot, something like that. The front one, it, so these are almost all at the same height of each other in the grass, or almost the same distance from the bottom of the canvas. They might be a little bit, you know, they might go up a little bit at an angle, but not a whole heck of a lot. And then the other foot, which is the far leg, uh, is lifted off the ground. So I'm actually gonna just come to the left of this one a little bit, give myself a little hoof in through here. So this will be, this one's actually out of the ground in through here. So this is lifted up and the rest are in the grass. So now I can start connecting these feet or the bottoms of the legs to the body. I wanted to plant these here. So when, so you don't have, you're not um, just, free willy trying to figure out where to put that bottom um, area and I wanted them to kind of be at the the right level or height. So I'll put this first leg on first. Um, I think I'm going to use my chalk for it. So it's going to come right by this bump in through here and in through here it comes out about an inch in that direction and then you can just bring a skinny area down for the um, bottom portion of the leg and then it's got its foot. The next one, so again, I don't want you to put it too far left or right, so this is about halfway. I'm just gonna go just a tiny bit to the left of my halfway mark, put a little marker. These legs are very narrow, so maybe about a quarter to a half of an inch. I can bring down this kind of diagonal line in through here. There's gonna be a little bump out for a knee, but I'm just gonna put the leg kind of in a diagonal part right now. And these back ones, they come kind of down and then they go backwards a little bit and then down towards the ground. So uh, I'm gonna go to the right of here, just a smudge, like a quarter of an inch, and then about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch is gonna be the, the other part of that, the thigh. So I'm gonna connect here to here with a kind of a soft diagonal line to about here I overshot this foot a little bit or that part of the leg and then just curve it back into that. This one comes in a little bit and then comes out for that joint right into here. I'm gonna go just to the right of this, maybe about a half of an inch, make myself a marker. And then this one is gonna meet this, this bump in the, the tail area in through there. So I'll do the front side first. I'm gonna do a similar thing that I did right here. I'm gonna bring it down, kind of curve it in just a little bit like that. Uh, bring it down here and then down into, I guess this could just be more curved into the, uh, what's the ankle. And then I guess I smudged my hand in that <laughs> over here. The, the back joint thing comes up a little bit. So I'm gonna go over like this to about here and then bring it down into this foot like that. And that's all I'm gonna do for my outline. I'm gonna be using my number five round brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put any drawing utensils away, make any little fiddling adjustments that you need, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat of our deer. I'm using my number five round brush the colors I'm using are brown, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a dark brown color to use as the base coat. I could very well use my burnt um, umber, but I wanted to have a little bit better opacity. I want it to be a little bit darker and a little bit more on the gray side. <coughs> Excuse me, so that's where I've pre-mixed myself my dark brown. So I've got it on my palette here. How I got to this is a lot of burnt, umber. 
a little bit of black. Be cautious on the black because it could really just turn it a, a gray color. The black will overpower the brown if you put too much of it in. And then just a tiny touch of white. The black and the white it equals gray. Added to my brown, I get this nice dark kind of grayish brown which is exactly the way that I wanted. <laughs> so I have a lot of these little deer in my, in my neck of the woods and when they start turning their summer colors, man, they are just like tree bark, a gray tree bark. <laughs> so we need to have a nice gray base here or a dark grayish brown base. So I've got my color and now I'm just gonna be painting it in. So because I've used black and white in my color mixture, I'm gonna get great coverage here and I'm just gonna go right to the edges. I am gonna slow down when I get to my legs because this is my opportunity to just give them the exact um, shape that I want. So as I go through these, if I feel that I want to you know, go right up to my chalk mark, I certainly can. If I feel that I need to readjust that shape any, I certainly can. So it'll be up to you. I tend to also just leave a little bit of my um, my guideline visible, especially when I'm doing animals or something that needs to be a specific size because I have a tendency of um, making my objects larger <laughs> if I don't have my guideline there. So sometimes you'll, you, well not sometimes, a lot of times I just keep a little evidence of my guideline until I'm really done and know that I can um, safely remove it or just get it to go away. Um, so if I if I keep some of my guidelines during this process, that's that's what, precisely why I do it. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just get excited and you just keep painting and you just don't pay any attention to your guidelines and things get much larger than you had expected. <laughs> so coming down this leg in through here, I'm just kind of watching the photo to see how it um, kind of transitions from the from the body into the leg. So looks like there might be a little kind of bump on there, and then it just kind of comes down like this. So when doing the 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 sketch or the outline for the um, animal, oh, and there's a little there's a little kind of knee bump in through here. I tend to really lean towards the simpler side of um, of drawing just so I can have the objects in their place. I can watch for you know my proportions and my um, placement and all that good stuff. But once I start that painting process, that's when I'm looking for those real nuances as far as, okay, well, this leg is going to be underneath and how, how am I going to see that thigh transition into, into the leg? Is there any extra, you know, muscle? So I'm seeing this one has a curve here and so doesn't this one. So I'm going to just bump this up just a little bit, give myself just a little tiny curve in through there. And again, you could certainly leave your, um, your sketch in its simple form and just follow that. But if you want to give it those um, more realistic kind of evidential qualities, the little nuanced details, this is, you know, this is for me an easy way to do it. I start really basic with my um, base. Oh, and you can get rid of this line too. <laughs> really basic with my outline. And that also helps me just not get overwhelmed because um, I think it can, you can very easily just get super overwhelmed, especially when you're trying to emulate a photograph with all of those little details. So for me, I think I, I need this bottom part of this um, tail to pop out a little bit more too. Um, it's so easy to get overwhelmed by those nuances especially in photographs. So if you can find a way to just bring it to the basics in the beginning, it makes it easier to add those details because you've got a solid foundation as to where things are placed, what the size ratio is from one thing to the, to the next. And it just helps make your building process that much simpler and that much more accurate too. I think if you try 
initially to go in for all of those little details, it, you, it's very easy to get them out of proportion because you're trying to do just one little one little detail next to something, not taking on or considering the big picture where you might have put something out of you know out of relationship or out of ratio with something if you're working those tiny tiny details first so I just like to go big basics first and then work my other details around that I'm gonna put I'm just gonna work from the top to the bottom because I know I'm gonna run into wet paint so I'm just gonna start up at the top work these little um, these little antlers so they're skinny at the top and then they get a little bit wider so I start at the top I'm gonna start at the top and then just push my brush a little bit harder as it comes down into that head and that'll give me a nice um, progressive size and then this little um, point comes out like that and of course you don't have to do yours exactly as mine you I'm emulating a photo you could certainly make yours not a young buck but a mature older buck so make it into whatever you want maybe somebody you know has you know a deer that runs wild in their in their neck of the woods and it has 12 points on its rack and you want to just make that or you've taken a picture of one with a lot of uh, points on its rack so feel free to make it into whatever you want you can just use this as a as a jumping off point you know maybe you've got a different kind of deer around you this is um a deer that's very familiar to me and and where i live but maybe around where you live maybe you have reindeer and they have different shapes to them the different head shapes so you can take this this basic knowledge and this basic way of building it and steer it into a more representational um, image of a deer that you know or of a deer that you think is you know more appealing than this one or you know maybe you make a baby deer that doesn't have antlers <laughs> but it has spots on it you know so you can really just have fun with it go go from this basic construction point and then just build it into whatever whatever way you would like um, the, I am going to leave definitely the evidence of where the bottom of this face goes so I'm just going to leave a little skinny line between um, the face and the chest because again I know me I'll get lost in there and forget where I wanted that little face if you if you painted the whole thing it's okay you've got the um, the little mark where the oval will meet the neck over on this left hand side so if you did paint over your guideline between your face and your neck it's all right we'll, we'll bring it we'll bring it back you'll be able to um, use the like I said this little um, indent in the neck area to help guide you into knowing where that face was and then I'm just coming right down in through here I'm gonna follow um, this down like this and then just give out that little so that's going to be the neck and then this is going to be little chest fur area in through here and then just finish off that little spot in the back and then I'm going to be using um, I'm going to use probably this same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the front tree branches. <laughs> so there's a big tree that is close to the viewer that's um, up at the top of the photo, and all we're seeing is the little branches to it. So we're going to paint that so it adds the perspective or adds additional perspective to the image. I'm going to be using my number five round brush. If I need to change for any reason, I will, and I'll let you know. I'm going to be using my dark gray that I, or my dark brown that I used for the deer, black, green, oxide yellow, white, and maybe a little bit of um, red. I'm going to put my branches in place first. There's a couple that are bigger and closer to us on this side. 
um, well, I don't know if they're closer to us. They look actually a little out of focus. I don't, and it almost looks like they're two different kinds of trees. So we're just going to have fun and paint some branches. You don't need to go exact. And that's another thing. When you're doing a photo or, you know, emulating the likeness of it, knowing when to kind of back off and not worry about every single little branch and every single little bud or leaf, that's a personal place that you need to decide on your own. I like to paint loose and free and have fun. So when it comes to little fine tuned details, I don't always pick them all to do. So I'm going to start with my dark brown color and I'm going to put some main ones in place. So I see that there's a few big ones coming over here, but I'm going to put them in relationship to where I see them based on my deer. So if I go up from my deer, the first branch starts a little over to the right of the top of the head of the deer. And then I'm just gonna, they look um, pretty smooth, but uh, they've got a little bumpiness in them. So you can every now and again, just if you push your brush just a little bit harder, so start and then just kind of push your brush a little bit harder, that's gonna give you a pretty natural looking um, branch and just don't make it super duper straight. And as you're going through this, you know, again, just pushing your brush at different kind of um, places will give you uh, a nice realistic look to it, as well as as you go towards the tip of the branch, just kind of um, let off on your pressure and make it a little bit skinnier. There's a couple of little um, buds and stuff along the way. So I'm just gonna kind of make some little dark things coming out of this branch and again take it wherever you want to take it this is pretty out of focus um, in the photograph so I'm just gonna allow myself to just um, be carefree and adding some little some little bumps and stuff here and there and some little branches coming out I do put a little bit of water on my brush every now and again especially when I'm gonna do um, little branches coming off and stuff like that so that's that's good for that one. I've got another pretty big one um, right next to it. So I'm gonna start in through here. And then again, just kind of push my brush a little hard every now and again to give myself that different width of that branch. So it um, looks like, you know, some branches are really um, one dimension or one thickness throughout them, but this particular one looks like it's got, um, you know, different widths to that specific branch so that's what I'm just trying to emulate <laughs> just the characteristics of a particular um, branch can just be different and if you can emulate um, just those little those little um, you know different ways that a branch leans or bends that will help again just give you that more realistic look to it um, I think that I want just a couple little pops in through here and then there's a dark one over here so i'm just going to take it somewhere it actually starts to the right of this one so maybe somewhere up in through here just from the top of my canvas and then it just kind of comes down like this i'm just starting with this basic color i will add a little bit of highlights and shadows and um, some other there's little uh, almost blossomy type of things on them. But again, I'm just having fun at this point. <laughs> There's some coming out of here. And after further investigation of the photo, I think these bright yellow ones are actually super close to us. I don't know, they're intermingled with these branches. So I'm not quite sure what's in front of what. I'm just gonna paint some branches where I see the branches. So I've got so, uh, one kind of coming over in through here. So again, these ones kind of look a little different than um, these ones over here, but it just could, it could be because we're seeing one closer than the other. So I'm just gonna kind of go with my intuition and just make happen what I feel should happen. This one's got some, some kind of coming off in through here like this. I'm trying not to paint over, you know, the parts of my background tree that I really liked. Oh, this one's got a fun one kind of coming down here. And you could use this to, you know, hide stuff. If you need to hide, you know, something didn't come out exactly the way that you wanted, you could certainly use the branches of this front tree to just um, give you some 
some disguising elements. <laughs> There's a couple of branches maybe coming down in through here. There's a lot right by the deer's head, but they're pretty narrow. So I'm just uh, using the tip of my brush, uh, allowing for uh, thinner branch appearance. And it comes out above the deer's head right in through here. So again, just trying to, if, if I decide not to paint every single branch, that's totally fine. But if you want to give it that, um, you know, that representation of that specific tree with that specific deer, just get certain elements like where did that branch come to and paint it there, but don't paint every single branch. Don't drive yourself crazy with every single branch, making sure that every single branch is in the same place or in the proper place as it is in the photo, but definitely just, you know, the ones that stand out, the ones that are um, very evident that they are where they are. Those are the ones that, you know, you attend to and and you can um, just give that them their their due place in in the tree. So I got some coming up in through here and I'm noticing these have a drop down and then they kind of the little tiny branches shoot up and then there's a whole bunch of little tiny branches in through here. So I've got the gist of them on. I do uh, want to add some highlights and shadows and um, some little buds and stuff. So just making sure I've got a good assortment of the, the main branches themselves, which I feel that I do. So I'm going to um, add some little pops of colors in order to give it the, the dimension I think that it needs. So first I'm going to do my shadows and my highlights on my branches, and then we'll pop in some little buds and stuff. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black. I feel like um, this these left ones are a little bit darker, so I'm just gonna pop in little marks of black in through these guys on the left-hand side, and I won't do it on the right-hand side, or I might, but just not as much. Um, so getting these trees to look a little bit different from one another, so this is just a little bit of black intermingled with that. Um, on this right tree, I'm gonna actually pick up, what am I gonna use? I think I wanna use, um, brown and white. So brown and white. Just give myself kind of like a tan type of a color to give myself little highlights on these guys in through here. So this is going to give me just little highlights on these branches, more towards like the top side of them. So I've got just this little, um, illusion of little highlights in through here. You don't have to put it on all of them. I just feel there's a lot of um, sunshine popping through in this photo and uh, I'm feeling like these branches will be more evident um, if we allow for a little bit of that highlight to appear on them. So I'm just using a little bit of brown and white to make sure you can see it in front of um, that background tree you could certainly um, fiddle with it as much as you want. Definitely in the darker areas, or the stuff behind it that's darker, you'll want to add the highlight on these branches so you can see them better. Um, and these branches I think are pretty okay. I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start popping in some color for little, uh, looks like buds and stuff on the tree. I'm going to start with some green oxide. I feel as if there's a bunch of, oh, I guess I'm going dark green. I didn't say dark green, but I'm picking up some dark green because um, I feel it, that the dark green is going to represent it better. And there's a whole bunch of little kind of buds and stuff on these guys. So I'm tapping it in pretty heavily, even though this is an out of focus um, uh, area of the painting. I, I feel like I, I just can be messy and that, that will allow it to look a little out of focus. I might soften the edges when I go to do the highlights on it. There's a big green area in through here. I'm going to put some yellow and white in a little bit, but I'm thinking that that's pretty good for those greens. In through here, I don't need to do much with the green because the, I'm not seeing it really on this section. I'm seeing more just little like white and little buds. So I'm going to um, now pick up 
Um, I'm actually going to go in for my light yellow. I didn't say I was going to use light yellow either, so I'm using some light yellow as little pops of um, brightness on, on some of these guys. And you can make them as soft as you want because it's out of focus. So I can just add these little pops of brightness at the at the tips of these and just wiggle my brush around. So I can, I'll put some white on too in a minute, but this is just gonna kind of get me started and put this little um, halo of sorts. You can put it on both sides of the branches. You can put it crossing over the branch. Just have fun with um, how you want that to, to be accomplished. Um, I'm gonna put some in through here and I'm pretty heavy with the paint right now. Um, I'm not worried about my, um, doing a thin layer on these. I'm just popping in these bright colors so you can see them in through here. I feel like I might want a couple in through here, um, but not a whole heck of a lot. I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to pick up some white paint. So white paint is going on my brush now and just going to kind of add little softness to these guys. And again, I'm not, I'm not over painting. So when I'm putting this white on, I'm not, I'm not painting over all of that yellow. I'm not painting over all of the green. I'm just adding these little soft color marks um, along the way that's gonna allow for these to just look kind of out of focus. You could even fuzz it up by just kind of um, softening those edges a little bit. So wherever you feel like taking that, um, that brightness you, or that softness, even on these little tips in through here, just popping just an itty bitty bit on those tips is gonna make them pop out even more. You could even put little sparkles in the air, like there's little dust kind of floating around. It's just a tiny bit of white on my brush, like the little particles in the air and you know, blowing in the, it almost looks like it's a springtime, you know, early summer, springtime type of a painting. I think I'm gonna pick up white plus a touch of red to hit the little buds on this tree and through here. So this is white and red on my brush just to give me maybe a little pink pop. And these kind of look like they're of a little bit different than these guys. So that's what's kind of telling me that these might be two different trees sitting next to each other that we're seeing the branches of. Um, I've got a couple of little ones over in through here. I might put a little bit of yellow as well, but right now just using red and white to pop in these tiny little buds and bright little spots inside this tree in through here and just have fun with it. You know, again, don't get caught up with having to make every single mark exactly where my mark is. My marks are not even exactly where they are in the photograph. I'm just trying to, again, explore colors, um, texture, placement of these, you know, of these branches and stuff in order to give it somewhat of a believable rendition of the photo that I, I'm looking at. I'm using the red and the white on these guys, not only because I'm kind of seeing it in the photo, but it's also helping this tree pop out from the one behind it because I didn't use any red in the tree behind it. I used a little bit of the of an orange type of a tone, but this will help um, it pop out even more. And you can go right over some of the branches, just pop these little, these little kisses of, of color in through there. Um, and I think, I think maybe just a couple more right on here. I'm going to pop maybe just a little bit of my light yellow in some of these guys in through here. And then after I dabble with these little dots and, and marks, I will definitely just let it dry and see if there's any little filling that I want to do. And if so, I certainly will. And you can too. Um, you could certainly be using a small brush at this point as well to get these little itty bitty marks in through here. Um, but once you've got this done, we're going to be using, um, I think I'm going to use my, my, I might use my small round brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, uh, and I mean my number, my number two, my number one small round brush, once you've got this done, you can wash this brush and get the other brush out and ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the head. I'm using my number one round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, white, blue, my dark brown and maybe 
um, my light yellow and red. <laughs> Just making sure I cover all of my bases and tell you all the colors I'm going to use. All right, so what I'm going to first do is I'm going to be putting my nose and my mouth and my eyes in place with a little bit of black. Then we're going to go around and uh, finesse our horns with some or antlers, they're not horns on deer, I think they're called antlers, with a little bit of highlights and shadows. Same thing with the ears. The ears have this dark kind of marking around the exterior, and then we'll put some light fur on the inside. We'll um, finesse the face with a little bit of um, tiny little details, and then we're gonna put a highlight around backlighting the, the deer a little bit. It seems like the sun is on the other side of the deer so there's a beautiful highlight all around the edges of the deer so i'm going to start with a tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of water on my brush at the same time so this will help control the tip of my brush as well as give me small little um tiny uh lines so what i'm going to first do is i'm going to give myself a little kind of sideways oval type of a shape well, it's oval, but it's pointed at the top right and the bottom left. So something like this is gonna give me my first little shape. You can even pull down that little corner. So it's not, it's kind of sits between where the ear and the antler meet. That's where the, the left part of it is. And it's a little bit below that ear. Like I have a little dip in on each side. That's about where the ear goes. And then on this left-hand side, it looks like we're not seeing as much of the eye, so if the left is a little bit smaller, that's okay. But similar type of a shape. I mean, we're these it's so tiny because we're just seeing it in the dark. <laughs> not really in the dark, but definitely um, it's tough to see just because of the the where the light is hitting the animal. So then I'm going to put a nose on so they have kind of like a wide um, boxy kind of a nose so it's going to be as wide as um, the whole bridge of the between the eyes so that's about as wide as the nose is um, and it just kind of it's almost like a soft rectangle something like this they have these particular deers have um, kind of black marking from on the sides of their uh, mouth, so to speak. I don't know how else to say it. So I'm going to take this um, black color and just pull it down on these edges of the nose just a little bit. Just an itty bitty bit, putting a little bit more water on my brush just to control my, my marks. So something like that. Um, the mouth itself is going to, actually I'm going to pull this nose down just a little bit more here. The mouth is just going to be um, just a really faint line in through there. I'm going to put some lighter lighter colors in a minute, but that's going to be that. I'm going to take that dark uh, watered down black and give myself a little um, outline, just a faint, I'm um, just sketchily outline around these ears, just a real sketchily outline just to give myself the hint of the dark um, tone from that um, exterior color of the ear. I'm gonna take that watered down black, give myself just a little hint of it on um, the, the antlers just in a little tiny bit like that. Now I'm gonna take my black plus um, a little bit of white, just a teeny tiny bit of white. So I'm in essence going kind of dark gray on this for the, maybe a little bit more black than that, um, on the bridge of the nose. I don't necessarily want it to go my um, light or my dark brown color, so I want it to have the understanding of kind of like a, a dark color. Um, so I'm just, this is black and white, giving myself this darker tone to the fur on the bridge of the nose, like a, a, a grayer, blacker kind of tone in through here. Um, I'm going to do a, pick up a tiny bit of my watered down black up at that forehead right in through here. Again, I'm just kind of watching the color pattern on my um, picture and it, see that it goes dark in through there, so that's what I'm doing. 
Um, now I'm going to, I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I think that's about all the dark areas that I need to put in. Now I'm going to pick up a bit of my, um, my dark brown plus a touch of white. So dark brown plus a touch of white. And I'm going to put a little highlight on the edge of that, um, not a bright highlight, just something for form on the edge of the, um, antler in through here so something like that I'm gonna do bright white in a minute but this is just to give me a little bit of form on them so just a teeny tiny bit like that I'm also gonna pull a little bit of lightness in the ears so this is my dark brown plus a tiny bit of white I don't want it to go super light this is one of those things that less is more I just need the hint of a little bit lighter color inside these ears so something like this is going to tell me that there's that little bit of extra or lighter fur this is where i think i'm going to bring in a tiny bit of red inside these ears so i'm going to just wipe my brush off and pick up a tiny bit of red almost as if we're seeing a little bit of the skin color inside those ears so just a itty bitty bit of red on top of that color will give you just the illusion that there might be we might be seeing a little bit of the skin um, in there. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white too because I don't feel like that went light enough right in through here. So just adjusting it just a little bit. There we go. That's too light. <laughs> just a little bit more water on my brush to rub that out. There we go. That works. Um, and now I'm going to start just kind of uh, manipulating the face a little bit. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. This is where I'm going to pick up my light yellow color um, and a tiny bit of white so light yellow and white what I'm doing here is I just want to lighten up but not make it white so a little bit of water too. Um, the chin underneath that mouth that we just put so I'm just putting a teeny tiny bit of a lighter color so I'm choosing to use my pale yellow that light yellow plus a little bit of white on my brush and I mean with a touch of water just very little faint Put a little bit on the sides too because they have a um, little bit next to their sides of their nose and through here is a little bit lighter color so very very minimal <laughs> and I'll almost hide the mouth like there's I'm hardly seeing the mouth in the picture at all so just really subtle 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 uh, that looks pretty good to me I'm gonna uh, kind of get rid of this dark chin so I'm just bringing down just I'm almost using like a glaze on top of it so it um, goes light but I don't need it to do go too too light maybe just a little little more in through here and here that works out well now I'm going to start adding lightness to um, the rest of the face so the rest of the face I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot I want to add some little sparkles in the eyes and then the um, the fur on the rest of the face just needs a little finessing and a little highlight at the top of the nose. So my eyes, I, I, I'm going to put a little highlight on the left one with um, a touch of blue and white. So just an itty bitty bit of blue and white. I'm just going to kind of take it right in through here. Just do a little, little kind of dot in through there. I'm going to put one on the right too. I don't see one in the photo on the right, but I'm putting one anyway. So that, that works for me. I'm going to use this light blue on top of the nose too, the bridge of the nose right in through here, kind of square it off just a little bit, just to give myself that, um, the, there is a, there is a highlight on the nose. I might, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my, um, dark brown plus white as well, just so I can get it to blend in. I want that shininess from the the blue but I don't need it to go too too much but I just kind of want to square this off a little bit so I'm just adding this bit of brightness in through here that looks fabulous something like that and now I'm going to start adding little bits of lightness on the sides of the head so I'm going to go from my dark brown plus white I might go into brown as well um, but we're going to try dark brown with white to start so this is where I'm going to put on the side of the head in through here just giving you that delineation between the head and the ear so something like that bring that right down to where the eye is I think there's a little highlight above the eye as well and I'm just really being subtle because this is 
this is what I'm seeing in the photo. I don't need it to go super duper light. Um, I just need those accents. So there's a little lightness underneath the eye. There's a, a little lightness above the eye. Just wanna make sure I get that because that's gonna draw the viewer's attention right to those eyes. There's a little bit on the side of the muzzle in through here. So again, this is just my um, brown, dark brown plus a little bit of white. That looks good in through there like that. And then on this right side, I don't have hardly any, any highlight, but I know that I need to have shape here. So I'm gonna do something. So that looks good like that. Um, I do need to close off this gap in through here. So I think I'm actually gonna add darkness. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black and close this off right here. So it'll give us a little shadow on this side of this face. So even if I didn't wanna go lighter on that right side, I, I'm, I need to do something. So I need to either you know put some shadow or put some highlight. And it, for me in the picture, I'm not seeing a lot of highlight on the right hand side. There looks like there's some kind of photo um, exposure thing around the eye that I, I'm reluctant to put in. So um, I'm gonna just go for the markings on the face. I feel like I could get away with a little bit darker in through here, as if this is the shadowy side of the face. So, you know, you can certainly manipulate yours whatever way you want. I'm adding a little bit more black in through here, and then I can go in for my, um, my dark brown plus a tiny bit of white if I feel I need to get that side of the face. I do want to, um, I feel like I want to lighten this left side of the face a little bit more. I am going to go in for some brown, the burnt umber and white on this left side just to give it a little bit more um, pop and brightness. And then we'll put a nice highlight around the edge of the, um, of the head. So this is looking pretty good right here. Just making sure I've got it as, as light as I want it before I, before I move on. So that's good. All right, so I'm gonna go in for my, uh, oh, I made just a little bit more on that nose. <laughs> so just a little bit more of that blue and white. Just want it a little bit. I feel like I need a little bit more evidence of this nose in through here. So just a itty bitty bit more so we can detect it a little bit more and maybe a little bit more of my light yellow and white on this left side of the face again I'm going for brightness on the left left side a little bit more than the right side, so that helps to, um, these colors help me do that. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna use my light yellow and white as my highlight color around the head. So there's lots of brightness over in this, around this ear, just kind of dabbing this brightness. I've got a big bright spot in through here. You could go all white if you feel that the white is where you want to take this highlight, feel free to do so. It's going to make this deer pop right out of the of the scenery. I just put a little bit of white up in through there. This whole ear is just surrounded by this beautiful highlight. So something like that. The antlers, I've got a couple of little spots in the antlers that I see pops of the highlights so or or white coming showing from behind so this is the background that we did it's good that we did the it darker you know and kept it kind of on that darker side like i was seeing in the photo so this way when we go to do this type of um effect with the highlight around the deer it makes it pop out from that background. If our background was lighter, it wouldn't have been able to show that distinct um, outline of the deer. And then I'm just gonna go right around uh, the, the outside of the head like this. I've got white on my brush, so right on this face, it's pretty light in the background behind it, so you're not really gonna see too much in through there. And if you did want to, you could certainly darken uh, the yellow a little bit, but I think I'm digging mine the way that it is. Um, and then we're going to be using our, um, probably our small round and our um, small bristle for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash this brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our deer. I'm using both my quarter inch bristle and my number one round. I'm gonna start with my quarter inch bristle and do as much work as I can with that. I know when I get to those legs though, this is gonna be too big. <laughs> so, And when I do the outline around the deer with that light highlight, this will definitely be too big. So I'm gonna be using black, my dark brown, red, my light yellow, white, and that might be it. I might actually tap into that lavender color too. I might utilize that as a gray tone as I go through, but I'll call them out as I use them. So first I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of black paint on my brush and make sure that I have all of my shadowy areas where I want them. So on this particular deer, this leg is the far leg and this leg is the far leg. So those are the far legs. There's gonna be a little bit of shadow underneath or in front of one of them, but the light source again is behind and it seems like it's kind of over in that direction. So I'm catching a little bit of um, light underneath the belly of the deer in through here. So, and uh, on this leg here too. So there's not a ton of shadow underneath the deer, but I definitely need a little bit on the legs. I also wanna show the contour of the muscles and the neck. So this bump in through here indicates where the neck is. And it, um, I gotta kind of give myself this like shoulder breast area. So I'll be doing that with some shadows. And I wanna separate that rear end uh, from the tail as well. So I've got a tiny bit of black on my brush and again, I'm wiping it off on my paper towel to control my quantity. So I, I'm gonna start in through here where this chest is. So I'm just gonna kind of give myself a little bit of um, information where I want this. So where this kind of dips in through here, I'm gonna just kind of bring that and give myself kind of a little V type of a shape. And then this I can bring down in between those two legs like this. I can just bring down a little bit of uh, fur texture in through here with my dark color. Same thing over here, just bringing down a little fur texture to help with that. I'm gonna put a little bit of darkness on the front part of that leg, as well as the front part of this leg and the front part of this leg over here. So I can, because I have very little bit of paint on my brush, I'm able to get these um, little shadowy areas. I think I also want to put um, this thigh in through here. I want to put a shadow in front of that just to uh, give myself the information where that thigh is versus the leg and same thing or versus the body and same thing with this leg in through here. I'm just going to pop a little shadow right behind um, that arm in through there so that helps me visually as I go through my process to um, make sure I know that, you know, that goes up in that direction. Um, my tail in through here, I'm just gonna pop a little, little darkness just to kind of separate that butt from the tail in through there. And then I already started a shadow up in through here. If you felt that you needed to advance that any, with more texture on the fur or anything like that, I'm gonna just bring down just a little bit of darkness in through here just um, for texture on the fur. So that looks pretty good to me. Uh, it looks like there's some dark stuff back here too. Um, and then what I'm gonna do from here, now that I've got those dark undertones, I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna lay on my lighter fur. So I don't need much to do much at all. I'm gonna start with my dark brown and a tiny bit of white on my brush. Just again, very little bit. Uh, and I'm just gonna go in and, and add some texture to this fur. So I'm gonna start here and just kind of pull down these little bits of fur in through there. Same thing with this little chest area in through here. Hardly any paint on my brush. Again, can't stress that enough. This kind of transcends right into the top part of this leg in through here. I do need to put more of my brown on my brush because I'm, I'm sensing that I have some unpainted areas over here and I don't wanna to go too much lighter. And I meant to say dark brown, not light brown there. Um, but th I'm just using these two color combinations or these two colors on my brush, my dark brown and my white, 
in order to give me this additional texture in the fur. There's not much, not much at all. I just want to, um, I'm, I'm watching the photo and I'm saying, okay, where, where, what direction is that fur going in? I see that it's kind of coming down here and this is all pretty soft and through there. I've got some, um, this is the belly area. I need to um, account for that. So I've got the kind of going in this direction like this. Again, it's not much and I don't even have much of a highlight or much of a shadow on the bottom side of the animal. I've got the fur on this back leg, but I don't really see a whole heck of a change in the color. Maybe maybe down this little tendon part in through here. Um, on the rear end, there's not a whole heck of a lot. I've got some texture that I'm sensing up in through here. And then it just gets kind of smooth on this belly area. So something like that, that looks good. Um, I do, I feel I need a, another little layer of darkness um, on the leg itself back here. So I just picked up some of my dark brown plus a teeny tiny bit of black. I might have to whip out my small brush for here, but we're just gonna try it with this brush first like that. That looks good. I didn't need to do much, just something to make sure that I had that second layer on there. I'm rewashing my brush so I can put some light fur on that chest, which is gonna be my dark brown and white. And this can be a little bit more aggressive because I'm seeing it as such a little bit uh, more brighter, a little bit more texture. I'm not, I'm not touching my canvas hard. I'm just really lightly tapping to get this uh, textural element in through here. It kind of comes down into this little bit like that. And then this guy, I feel I want to make even lighter like that. And now I just need to make sure it all connects. So like this doesn't connect to that for me. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and pick up some of my dark brown on my dirty brush. So that'll just help to if I do have some of the remnants of the white on there, it'll just allow it to talk with each other. Uh, that definitely gets darker in through there. This is a weird little spot. I, it looks like it kind of gets lighter before it gets darker. So I'm not quite sure how that is. That's just the way the neck is working, I guess. And then that kind of transcends over that. We've got here. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna add, I said I was thinking of using some of that um, lavender tone. I'm gonna use a touch of that right now, a touch of that lavender tone. And I just, I feel like there's some really neat um, colors kind of in here. So I'm just gonna pop just a couple of little spots of this. I just wiped my brush off because that was a little bit too much in through here just giving, it feels like there's some really neat uh, dimension to the deer in through here. So that lavender just, I felt like I was seeing it. So I went ahead and did it <laughs> somewhere in through there. I'm gonna uh, bring just a little bit of this up in through here, some cool texture back in through here. And then once I've got that done, I can reassess and say, okay, do I need red anywhere? Do I need brown anywhere? I do need to do my legs. so. I think I'm gonna um, just let this rest for a second here while I go do the legs and then I'll come back with maybe my little detail brush to uh, make any adjustments on that. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit of um, my dark brown and white on this top of this tail and through here. This is gonna get a real bright highlight in a, in a little bit, but I'm just gonna start it right now with this little bit in through there. So I'm gonna to switch to my small round so I can hit these legs because this is just gonna to be too big for me. So I'm switching to my small round. I'm seeing some red um, in these back legs. So I'm gonna go red with a touch of my light yellow um, and create a little bit of a um, reddish hue on this little part of the leg in through here. Oops, I'm totally going outside my lines. Um, and on this, so I'm just gonna kind of rub it in a little bit, put a little bit of water on my brush. And again, this is one of those things that I'm, I'm adding almost like a glaze to this leg. So it's gonna take on some reddish tones as I put the, um, 
as I put the details on top of it. So just red with a tiny bit of my light yellow and just giving a little bit of a reddish hue in through here. And that's gonna make these legs look like they're glowing from that light source. So a little bit in through here. That works, I don't see it too much on these guys. Um, now I'm gonna just wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go back into my dark brown plus white and put um, my lighter areas uh, in or uh, just little fur texture. So I've got a little bit in through here. And again, this is my back leg. It looks like it's being lit up just a little bit. Or that might be the bottom of um, the fur on the belly. So we'll, we'll get to that. But there it looks like there's a little lightness under here. I'm picking up a tiny bit of my light yellow too. There's a little tendon or something in through here. So just accounting for that. A little water on my brush. Get these colors to just blend and spread a little bit better. And then my dark gray plus a tiny bit of white just on this little um, knee area to get that to pop out just a little bit on that one. I don't really need to do much to the hoof. I'm just going to make sure that it is fully painted. Uh, maybe a, a tiny little bit of white just to give me uh, that was my dark brown plus white just to give me a little bit of form on that. These guys in through here, I don't feel like I need to really do anything. Just make sure that they're painted all the way. So brown plus a little bit of white. Um, I feel like I could bring a little bit of this muscle in through here. Um, but I'm going to be hitting the whole outside of the animal with that highlight. So again, I, you know, don't do more than you than you really need to. So now that I've got that, I can, um, I think I'm going to go in for, um, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going for it. I'm going light yellow and white is going to be my highlight combination around the animal. And if I need to adjust anywhere, I certainly will. So I'm just going to kind of tap I, I actually, there's a cute little piece of fur in through here that I want. <laughs> I just put my dark brown back on my brush. Sorry, I didn't see it before, so I see it now. I'm putting this little piece of fur in through there because I think it's super cute. <laughs> Sorry, washing and drying my brush. Back to my light yellow and white. And here we go. As I go around the, the animal, I'm not going to do a solid straight line. I'm just kind of pulling out these little fluffy pieces because that to me is what I'm seeing that the animal has these um, little fluffy pieces not just white but fluff so I'm going to just kind of uh, try and emulate that as I'm coming around here where do I see it it's definitely more fluffy on the body than it is on the legs so the legs I'll give a little skinnier line around them but again this is all highlighted from from behind so as you're as you're doing this if you're you know if you need to narrow a, a, a leg like I just did just pull it pull in that highlight a little bit more um, but it will make the the whole animal pop against that background so any if you if you're not seeing it that just probably means that your background is a little bit lighter than um, mine is and and your highlight is getting a little bit lost so if that's the case, you could certainly make um, the area behind the animal a little darker, and that would that would allow for this this highlight to pop even more. That will be totally up to you if you want to, you know, if you feel that that's necessary to to bring your painting into that place, that magical place. I'm putting it right along the edge of the body. I'm gonna actually bring this right into this belly too, because I feel like. I need to to get that to separate from the leg and then just bring this uh, bright and I keep going yellow white and if I on these smaller areas I put a little tiny bit of water on my brush to help me um, uh, get the smoothness I want there's a little kind of larger area right in through here that's pretty fun and if you go white and you're like whoa that's too too bright just let it dry and you can put um, another color on top of it. You can bring in a darker tone or even that, you know, more of that light yellow color on it. And this, again, I'm just kind of outlining and it's making my, my deer pop as I go towards this rear end. This is gonna get a lot of fluffiness. So again, this is my 
light yellow and white and you can shape this this back tail whatever way you want just lots of little fluffiness <laughs> coming out and then um, it kind of transcends right down into this leg in through here and then I'm just gonna go ahead and outline the back side of this leg so I have a super shaky hand so as I'm going through this it, I'm resting my hand on my canvas and that will help steady my hand and allow me to get the outline that I want on the on the top of the back and through here looks like there's uh, quite a bit in through here and I feel like um, I want to add a couple of additional tones especially on the top of this back so I'm putting some it pretty my highlight pretty aggressively and then I'm gonna tap in maybe a little bit of red and um, a little bit different tone so I'm gonna I'm gonna I didn't wash my brush I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of red and my ooh, I'm gonna go uh, burnt umber I don't know if I said I was gonna use burnt umber so red and burnt umber oh and and some of my chrome yellow <laughs> sometimes I just can't help it so I'm I'm just dabbing in these additional kind of hues Ooh, I feel like I want to put it right in through here too. just polka dotting allowing for the, that to catch the light and then I would just fiddle I think that's about all I want to do on it at this stage um, uh, I think <laughs> maybe a little bit of my lavender hold on I feel like I want just a little bit more in through here um, so I would let mine dry and just kind of reassess reevaluate once it's dry if there's any little pops of um, color that I want to, that I want to be more evident or more shadows, but I'm thinking that it's looking adorable right now. So I'm gonna be using um, a combination of my medium, or my number five round and my number one round for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash this brush and take out this and the medium round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to finish the ground. So I'm gonna use my medium brush, or my number five and my number one rounds. What I'm gonna be doing in this step is doing, just finishing all the texture for the grass in through here, maybe popping on a couple little blossoming flowers of sorts. And then there's this, Oh, like bush over in through here that I want to incorporate as well because again it adds to the perspective the bush is closer to the viewer than the deer so it really gives the uh, impression that the deer is just kind of you know coming out from the forest to peek and see who's taking a picture of it <laughs> so I'm going to use these two brushes the colors I'm going to use are my lavender color red white dark green um, and maybe a little bit of black and brown. I don't know if I said yellow too. Yellow too. Chrome yellow, that is. <laughs> and if I use any of the colors, I'll let you know. So I'm going to first start by using some of my lavender color. And what I'm going to do with this color is have it as the foundation for this bush right in through here. So I'm seeing that there's a big, like, it's a little bit above the bottom of here. There's a big kind of area of um of a bush or something in through here and it's got some grayish tones behind it so i'm going to just use this as my foundation just kind of rub in a little area i'm going to put a touch of water on my brush to give myself um some the start of what would be little branches and stuff coming out in through here but again you don't just want a mass of color I'm gonna, I soften the edges and I'm pulling out these little pieces. And at the bottom, it's going to um, work its way down into some grass. So again, I'm just using my lavender color and I can just figure out where this bush thing ends in relationship to the foot. And to me, it's kind of almost parallel, maybe up just a little bit from that foot. So I can use that as my, um, as my in relationship to <laughs> uh, perspective. So I can just take my, my medium brush. I'm seeing some 
grass pieces kind of coming out in through here. I think I'm going to, um, I don't believe I'm switching already, but I'm switching to my small uh, round because I want these to really look skinnier. So I'm just going to pull some of them out like this and just kind of get this to merge a little bit better in through here. And again, this is going to be the foundation for this grassy stuff, this grassy bush thing. So utilizing this um, this tone is really going to work well um, with the other colors that are going to go on it. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute. While that's sitting, I'm going to work on this area in through here. So I just want to make sure I have, you know, some little grassy flowery stuff, some nice white bright pops. I also need to make sure that I've covered the feet well enough. So I'm going back to my number five round and I'm going to um, pick up some of my dark green and I'm going to first uh, go right where my my feet are just to make sure that I've really uh, covered those that they they that there's no confusion of where they are <laughs> that they are definitely behind the grass and you don't just have to do it right at the feet where this dark color you can use it coming down into the other you know the other grass a little bit because it should be a, a transition from out of focus to in focus so I'm gonna um, use my little marks in through here to make sure that the, the bottom of that foot is covered and it looks like it's in the grass. But then as I'm moving down the canvas, just kind of making bigger marks, maybe more squiggly marks to get it to just blend in with that out of focus stuff that's um, down at the bottom. This foot's fine. And then over in this area, I don't need to do much. Again, just kind of, I want that transition to look uh, nice and believable. So I'm just popping up a couple of longer pieces of uh, the dark green grass. And of course you could use a smaller brush. You could use a long um, detail, like a rigger type of a brush with um, more uh, longer, skinnier bristles. That will help to hold the paint on the brush and allow for you to make these really long um, slender marks. But I just like to put um, moisture on my brush and just try not to push hard <laughs> and that will give me some good dark um, or some good length in those pieces of grass and I'm trying to intermingle it and overlap it with the section that's behind um, so that's looking pretty good I feel like I need a little bit of extra dark stuff down at the bottom again down bottom is all out of focus but just making sure that I've got everything painted the way that I want. So I'm just making sure that it is colored in. I'm now going to use this dark green uh, plus a touch of black. So my dark green plus a touch of black is going on my brush to give myself a couple of really dark pieces in through here and just making sure that it's going to um, transition into this grassy area pretty well. So this is dark green plus black on my brush, giving myself some dark um, pieces of grass in through here. I see a couple kind of, I'm reluctant on this one because this one's going to be a bigger one and it's going to be right near my, uh, my deer. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to be real cautious and just, you know, tread, tread slowly. So that looks pretty good. Maybe a couple more little darker ones kind of popping in in through here. I've got a couple of darker ones in this mass up in through here, but this is going to um, have some additional color on it. So this is just giving myself the dimensional um, element of it. I think this, um, I need a little more. There we go. A little more moisture on my brush because it wasn't sinking into those little holes in the canvas. There we go. Now we got it. And then that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to um, pick up some brown paint. I don't know if I said I was going to use brown. I'm going to just transition back a little bit. I just want a couple of little dark marks because I'm going to be putting some um, bright flowery kind. Not They're not really flowers, but um, just definitely um, some little bits of texture and stuff. So just kind of allowing for a couple of little darker marks, maybe back in through here. A little bit of water on my brush so I can kind of just transition this with just little kind of squiggly marks. 
allowing for it to look just really natural. I, I often see brown when I'm, when I'm painting natural things. So for me, brown is, is kind of essential if I want something to look natural. That's, you know, painting neutral and natural things. Brown is the, the, the denominator there. That, that's what's going to make it neutral and, and more realistic looking. So we've got that in through there. That looks pretty good little bits here and there. Um, I want some little bit of lightness in through here, so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up some of my, uh, a tiny bit of light yellow and an itty bitty bit of red, so light yellow and red. I feel like there's some um, kind of hues of lightness in this um, out of focus area, so I'm just kind of scrubbing it um, in a circular motion, so light red plus a little bit of, um, uh, light yellow plus a little bit of red i forgot what i used there and just you could do this with the small um uh bristle brush as well i'm just kind of popping it in here and i just feel like that i'm seeing some out of focus little kind of bokeh dots every now and again down and through here so just adding to the dimensional element um and then once i've got that done i'm going to go back to that bush over in the right and then we'll come back and add some flowers and stuff over here on this side. I'll just kind of get rid of whatever's on my brush. So over here, I see some burnt sienna-y type of colors. So I'm gonna, I didn't wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up red and uh, chrome yellow on my dirty brush uh, and a little bit of uh, burnt umber. So red, yellow, red, chrome yellow, and burnt umber are on my brush right now. And I'm gonna be dotting I'm dotting in this um, like little rusty textural leaves, I guess, for back, lack of a better terminology for them. And I'm just, I'm just stippling. So red, yellow, and brown. And because I'm using all three colors, I'm gonna get some light spots and some dark spots, and it's gonna make it look like it's just got some dimension to it. I don't, I'm not going for, you know, photorealism on on this little area in through here. I just want to have similar colors, similar texture, um, and this is going to help me accomplish that. I might even pick up, I'm picking up a tiny bit more black down at the bottom here. I feel like it's a little bit darker down in through here. Maybe a little bit more red, yellow, and my brown just to kind of speckle in a little bit more in through here. And this is one of those areas that you decide how, how invasive or much you want to do it 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 doesn't have to be exactly nothing has to be exactly like the photo but if you want to bring it into a more realistic place i'm just picking up now uh white and my light yellow because i feel like i want to pop in now just a couple of little brighter marks just to um, stay true to what I'm seeing in the photo, but not taking it all the way. Just these little tiny speckle marks. I could definitely be using my um, small bristle brush, but I'm just going to work with this brush. And if I feel I want to alter it later, I certainly will. And there's a couple of little spots of this um, off this grass and through here. And this helps pop color into it too. So as you're going through it, if you want to just pop in a couple of flowers here and there, I'm picking up some light yellow right now. Um, you can certainly use one of these steps or one of these elements to say, oh, well, I want these to be purple flowers and just change it up, you know, make it into, you know, a, a visual pleasure for you. And it can definitely just take on some aspects of the um, photo, but you can, you know, make those little decisions on your own to tweak certain things. Picking up a little bit of black and brown, burnt umber that is, um, get some of these just a little bit darker in through here and here. And then I definitely need a little bit darker in through here because this is the back side of the bush. <laughs> the, the front side's over on the sunny side, um, but I think that works out pretty well. And now I'm gonna um, just pop in some pretty just, um, impressionistic little white flowery things. So I'm gonna pick up just some some white uh, and my light yellow and and pink, I mean red, <laughs> just like I did over in that tree up there, just to give myself a little kind of different 
um, looks. So this is white, ye light yellow and, and red. I'm gonna pop some white on it in a minute, but I just wanna add a little bit more color into here. So this red combination is gonna help me do that. And I'm just kind of dotting it, giving myself these little kind of impressionistic flower-y things at the bottom here. You can pop it wherever you want. I just feel it was gonna be a good kind of color transition and allow me to um, add, you know, tie the other colors into it and also give it a little pop of, of summertime flower fun. And I'm just gonna pick up some white and then just pop some little bits of white here and there. And of course you can make yours as in focus or as subtle as you want. It's gonna be up to you how far you wanna take these details. And then once you've got it in a pleasurable place for you, we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So you can just put um, this uh, medium one, medium round away, take out a small uh, detail brush. Ooh, this is gonna be hard to stop now that I'm seeing all the sunshine coming into these little these little crevices of the, of the grass. Um, so just, you can put this brush away, take out a small detail brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are onto the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I think I'm going lower left on this one with, um, my, I'm going to go with my light yellow. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you can certainly sign yours with your first name. You can sign it with the date. You can make up a fun special symbol. Whatever you want to sign yours with is up to you because it's your painting and you get to mark it however you would like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself an adorable young buck. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.